good news, everyone. Yes. If you haven't planted your seeds for your garden yet, there's still time. So you're in luck, Master Gardener, the green thumb guru himself, Ed Sordip, is here to show us how and we're going to divide a little bit today. Yes. Because a few weeks ago when you were here, we started a bunch of these seeds, and these are actually some of the same ones. Yep, but they were here before, and now they're... Um they're up and growing. So take us through what we did last time. Okay, the last time we actually talked about starting your seeds, we took um, uh, basically a tray and a top like this, which mm -hmm. is a, a greenhouse top. We filled it with potting soil like this, and then we watered it in, and then we actually added some seeds to it and, and planted them and put it on a heat mat and then put it under shop lights because that's the best source of light if you don't have a lot of daylight uh, for 16 hours a day. And then you've got these really healthy res uh, results here. I mean, mm -hmm. things are really super green. Uh, the stems on these marigolds are actually burgundy. So they're doing really well. You're also the green thumb guru, though. So, I mean, I don't know if everyone's going to have them. No, make look it, this nice, but you also have to make sure that you pet your plants, right? Yeah. You've been I, petting them a lot? Yeah, as, uh, I, every night. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I told uh, you earlier that that was a really good thing to do. If you actually go in with your plants are up and about and you give them a little brush like this now and then it's actually you're stimulating that they're out in the environment with the wind blowing on them so they get stronger stems and it stimulates them to grow a little bit better. Oh, yeah, so you're making tough kind of plants. Nice yeah. Too. yeah. It's also a whole lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> but the next step, because there's much too many plants in one bin, so now we yeah. need to divide them. Yeah, I, I grew them on the heat mat. There's not a lot of room on the heat mat, so I put a lot of plants in here. So now, in order to keep them growing strong and getting really big, bigger and bigger, it's time to divide them up. So what we can do is I actually have some soil right here. Um, what I like to divide them up and put them in now is instead of a regular um, a flat like this that has no holes in it, I like to do it with a flat that does have holes because now they're going to be eventually going outside and if it rains on them, this will drain nicely. You won't have puddles that they'll I be living it. in. So what we did, we already put the soil in here. I have it right here, like yeah. this. And now all we have to do is we have to pry these plants out. Now I guess I'll, since I'm over here, I'll do it. Now I'll take this little clump from here. I'm just basically prying around. You'll see that the uh, roots have all knitted together already and there's a really good root system here. Oh, look at that. I'll try to let them see that. So there's the roots, so that's a really good root system. So all these guys are all together, so we could either just start to um, gently tease them out like that. I'm doing it by the roots. But ideally, you want to take one plant out at a time. Yeah, well, you can divide them into a, a, a clump like this and then keep um, paring it down to a little. Now, if these are really close together, so if your plants are all interknit like this, you can get off a little soil. And Ashley, if you want to pick up that glass of water right yes, there. Yes, anything I can do to help you. Yeah, Ed, thank you. I'm learning so much. <laughs> then all you have to do is actually put them in the water like that and dunk them around and actually that will rinse off the soil and the plants will start coming off a little bit easier. Wow. Like that. That's a great tip. Yeah, so then you do a lot less uh, stress on the plant. So now all we'd have to do, so now here we have our different plants. Now I, it's ideal that you would actually hit, hold them by the leaves, not the stems, because yeah. if you hold them by the stems and if you're not gentle enough, you could crush the stem. And then there'll be no more, uh, That's no more plant. Right. <laughs> so then, now all we do is I filled this up with a lot more soil than I did um, when we initially planned them because they're going to be in here for a while. And so you just want to space them out good. I don't know if, um, if you want to start, Seth, you can use... Sure. Oh, and then a very technical tool you have here, a plastic butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> so you just make a little space? Yeah, I make a little space and then I put it right in and then you can just, yeah, you can just tuck it in a little bit. Like so? Yeah, you don't have to be so gentle. Just <laughs> bring it right down. I'm nervous. I don't want to yeah. hurt your plants. No, he, he's good to go. And so we would just keep doing that and now, giving them enough space. What should the spacing be for this or does it vary by plant? It would vary by plant and how long they're going to be in there. Mm -hmm. If you had something like a zinnia, um, what you do is you actually transplant that right after the primary leaves um, and before they get their secondary leaves. And the difference with primary and secondary leaves are when the plant first comes out of the, the ground, um, it has more of a simple leaf like this pepper leaf here. It's just an oval. Just there's two leaves that come out. That's the primary leaves. The secondary leaves are like these marigolds here that just came out. These are like the adult looking leaves. So that's, you, that's how you know. It's so like baby teeth and uh, yes, adult teeth. Yes, exactly. exactly. And so then uh -huh. once you get these in and you have these all spaced like this, we just put them in. Then you would be sure to water them again once they're in there because so you want to water them again. Yeah, you want to make sure you get rid of 
any air pockets that are in there. You want me to water them? Sure, you can water those guys. <laughs> and actually a half an hour, an hour before we transplanted, make sure your soil is nice and moist and they have a lot of water so that before they're going through this process, they're really plumped up and ready to go. Okay. And so now after this, you leave them for a few days, you let them acclimate, and then you can actually start fertilizing. I actually started fertilizing, I only did one fertilizing so far, and that was when they had their secondary leaves, and I just took a regular um, run-of-the-mill fertilizer, you know, miracle Grow or whatever, or your organic, and I actually just cut the, the dilution in half, so it was a little bit weaker, and then I just mm -hmm. watered the plants. But make sure anytime you water seedlings or regular house plants, you do it when the soil is not dry, because then they would just absorb too much fertilizer. It'd be like if you were in the desert and all you wanted was water and somebody gave you a Big Mac, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> it good, be so, but you don't want that. Yeah, and, yeah, it wouldn't help you out too much at that time. <laughs> now, here's my question. Uh, the good first time when we were growing them straight from the seeds, we were using this dome. When it gets to be this high and, and this tall, do we still use the dome, or have we graduated away from it? Yeah, the domes are off as soon as you take them off the heat mass, or as soon as the plants actually germinated and got up. So once they've sprouted, oh. these throw away, save them for next year. Yeah, save it for next year. They're too expensive to throw away. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Well, throw it to the back of your garage. Yeah, yeah. yeah to your, well, actually, it's better to keep it in a warmer environment because plastics tend to degrade mm -hmm. with the cold, warm cycle. So if you keep them in the basement or something, oh. it actually makes them last longer, and you'd want to do that. Now, there's still time to plant seeds, too. There's a ton of seeds out there you can plant. We actually have a, a list here. Um, here in April, there's plenty of things like uh, flowers. You have alyssums, asters, celosia, cleome, cosmos, dahlia, dusty miller, miller four o'clocks, marigold, and it goes on and on. You can actually go online and find out. Uh, for and that list, by the way, it's going to be online yeah. by massappeal.com later today. But so it's, I it's, can still play, I can still start with the, the start very with beginning this. with the yeah. dome so and there, do that now. Yeah, you have plenty of time. And perennials, because it takes a whole season, mm -hmm. um, you won't get flowers this year probably, but you can even plant them all the way up to June and they would just get thicker and heavier all during the summer and then they'll go through the winter and they'd be fine. And then for next spring, you're going to have a, a present. The most yeah. luxurious yeah. garden going. Yeah. Ed, it's always a pleasure having That's you here. I always get tips when Ed comes back. Me too. I've just okay. learned so much. Wealth of information. And Thanks, if you Ed. want these tips or any of the ones we've done with Ed, all you do, go to uh, mymassappeal.com. Just visit us online.